this is your childhood idol. I, mean, I, I know how much Magic Johnson means to you. What is your reaction? He saw the light at the end of the tunnel. The problem was that it was a train. And he realized that he wasn't going to be able to close the deal. When we talk about top free agents this offseason in 2019, Kawhi Leonard, KD, Klay Thompson, Kyrie Irving, they weren't in line to be Los Angeles Lakers. He did bring LeBron James. That is something that he can celebrate. However, when you look at the trade packages that they had this, off uh, this summer, I mean, this season, even for a guy like Anthony Davis, those offers didn't get better when Brandon Ingram's dealing with his blood clot issues, Lonzo Ball's dealing with his health issues, Kuzma did improve as a player. You thought that their stock was going to boost playing alongside LeBron James. Their stock did not boost. So he understands that he's probably not going to be able to get his goal accomplished, so it's probably the best time to step down. Wendy, you're incredibly plugged in with this Lakers team and with the organization as a whole. What was your reaction to finding this Let me out? just add a couple of things to Woj's reporting. Yeah. Um, the meetings that Magic referred to at Genie Bus, they did not go well. It was very clear, even though they were amicable, that Genie wanted one thing and Magic wanted the other. Now, Genie made it clear that Magic could do what he wanted, but he, there was a disconnect there. Secondly, this stunned LeBron. They were completely caught off guard. Um, normally, LeBron is very up to date what happens in an organization. He doesn't always get to make the calls, but he always knows first. This has never happened to him before. Um, but it was what he, he has articulated to Jeannie and he's articulated to Magic before he left. He remains 100% fully committed to the Lakers. I, don't, I mean, I say that, of course he is. He's got a three year contract. There's nothing that he can really do, and he's not going to do anything. He doesn't have a no-trade clause or anything anyway. So he's going to remain committed. Um, when it comes to the Lakers, where they are now, Magic, as great of a player as he is, uh, was, as great as a businessman as he is, as good of a person as he is, he was completely ill-equipped to run an NBA franchise. And he was completely ill-equipped to handle what needed to be handled over the next six to eight weeks which is what he's basically admitted here. Can, we, can I drill down into that? Yeah. Why? Is he is ill-equipped because he doesn't want to do all of the little dirty work, if you will, that goes into something like this? Why was he not ready to do this? The, he doesn't have the scope of what it takes to do this. Frankly, the Lakers run as a family organization. That is a nice thing to say. In 2019, you cannot run a basketball operations department as a family. When Jeannie Buss took over, with from her brother. She hired one of her father's best friends in Magic Johnson. She hired Kobe Bryant's agent in Rob Palinka, and, she hi and, and Luke Walton was hired as the coach, who was basically the surrogate son of Phil Jackson, who was her uh, fiance and boyfriend for 15 years. That is no way to run an organization. And while everybody respects Jeannie, everybody genuinely likes Jeannie, she has presided over the six worst years in the history of the franchise. By any measure, it has been a complete and utter disaster filled with poor management decision after poor management decision. They got LeBron James by default. They fell into LeBron. They didn't win his services over. So, as Woj mentioned, Magic gave Jeannie a gift. They were in a crisis situation here because it was a family turning on itself. She didn't want to have to deal with that. He gave her a gift by, by pulling the ripcord. She now has the opportunity to turn this over and take the family out of it and turn it back into a business. And, and for players and agents, for a really long time, you looked at the Knicks situation and the Lakers situation as nepotism gone wrong, based on what you just described as an ineptitude of the leader to actually create a, a domino effect of success from the top down. And Magic also talked about the backstabbing and whispering. I'm going to go a little deeper into what he means by that. So being... Irvin Johnson is you walk into a room and everybody's enthusiastic about seeing you because of all of the great things that you've been able to accomplish, okay? But you can't separate that from Magic Johnson in L.A. based on the fact that now he's the president of the team. And a lot of people love the Lakers as much as they love him. So therefore, when they don't make the playoffs for six straight years, he's talking about the fans. He's talking about all of the people that aren't so enthusiastic about seeing him anymore because they're unhappy with the fact that the Lakers have not, been, have not been one of the best teams in the game. With all due respect, he's delusional then. Because mm -hmm. if you are going to say, I'm the president of the Lakers, I'm going to run this, this is not about what happened in 1987. It's just not. And I know that was wonderful times, and they can put it on the scoreboard, and they can look at those banners. And when he walks into a restaurant, he can get a standing ovation. When they do business, when they call the New Orleans Pelicans, they don't say, oh, that's right, we're talking to Magic. Oh, we'll put Anthony Davis on the next flight. 
When Matt Scalia this year was questioned about his decisions about going to the finals, he said in a press conference in front of everybody, I'm Magic Johnson. I went to nine finals. Hey, man, that is awesome. That does not mean you start every game up 9-0. And their unwillingness to deal with that from the top of the Lakers organization to the, to the, to the floor has led to this failure. And they have had a lost year here. They have completely lost a year. And that is a bad thing to do when LeBron James is 34 years old. So it sounds like you are saying that if the Lakers clean house, this could be a good time to do that. But do you really think that Jeannie Buss is going to do that? We, we heard Woj say it. You know, Walton and his staff, was ex they were expecting to be fired today. And what do they do with Palinka? What do you see them actually doing? And what would you do if you were in charge? Right. Well, I don't, I don't think Luke Walton deserved to be fired. I don't necessarily think that's an answer. But if you hire somebody who wants to fire him, you have to support that hire. Um, Woj mentioned R.C. Buford and Bob Myers. They should absolutely check in with those guys. They should check in with Masai Ujiri at the Toronto Raptors. They should check in with Tim Connolly of the Denver Nuggets. The top of the, of the absolute cream of the crop, they should see if they can get them. The Lakers have money. And that's a desirable job. They also need to call David Griffin. David Griffin is in a unique position here. One, he has a relationship with LeBron James, won a championship with him in Cleveland. Two, he has a relationship with Luke Walton. Yeah, Luke Walton, people may forget, played in Cleveland for a year and a half. David Griffin was there. They have a positive relationship. And David Griffin knows how to deal with complex situations. So that's a guy, a candidate for sure.